Gunfire overnight at a Highland Village home. We have the latest. OU's food pantry is serving more clients than ever, and two Capitol riot participants have been sentenced. This is OU Nightly. Thanks for watching OU Nightly. I'm Cameron Joyner. And I'm Parker Abels. Tonight, a Norman community is recovering after shots were fired overnight. OU Nightly reporter Pepper Papura is live at the Cleveland County Detention Center where the suspect is being held. Pepper. Cameron Parker, neighbors woke up to the sound of gunfire last night when a man barricaded himself inside of a Highland Village home. According to a statement from police, officers were called to the scene Tuesday evening for reported burglary. A relative of the home's residents, Alexander Daniel Torvey, forcibly entered the home. Police discovered Torvey was armed and evacuated nearby homes. Around 1 in the morning, Torvey opened fire on officers after stating he wanted police to kill him. The suspect was taken into custody around 6.30 this morning, but evacuated neighbors were asked to continue avoiding the area. While officers investigated, a vehicle graffitied with hate symbols was visible inside the crime scene, but was not mentioned in a statement from police. Torvey is being held here at the Cleveland County Detention Center as police continue to investigate the incident. Live in Norman, I'm Pepper Papura, OU Nightly. Thanks, Pepper. Inflation is raising the price of just about everything these days, especially at the grocery store. OU Nightly's Addie Crawford is inside the food pantry here on campus that is making sure people have something to eat. You guys, I'm inside of the OU food pantry right now where students, faculty, and staff can get food just like this with no questions asked. After a relocation to what was formerly known as the Kate Center Restaurants, the food pantry is able to help out more community members than ever before. If you could scan your ID for me. The scanning station at OU's food pantry in Norman is seeing more scans than ever. It's one of those topics that doesn't really get talked about. Pantry staff say they've seen more than twice as many weekly clients since moving to a bigger space. Garb Singh is among the volunteers helping keep the fridges full. He's just part of what's become a large group of students helping out. Our signups are like buying OU Texas tickets. They run out so fast. So I'm a freshman and uh, then like once like my class is settled and everything, like I was ready to like jump in. But food insecurity isn't just impacting OU's campus. According to the Regional Food Bank of Oklahoma, Oklahoma comes in as the nation's fifth hungriest state. But those helping at the pantry say those impacted aren't just statistics. They're people. And fellow Sooners. We do our best as students, you know, as faculty members, and as friends to support each other. Inflation has impacted all of us so heavily over the past few years. The food pantry tells me that likely inflation is the reason that more people are coming through the doors of the food pantry. Reporting live from the OU Food Pantry, Addie Crawford, OU Nightly. Thanks, Addie. Well, allergy season is in full swing and some people are getting hit really hard. OU Nightly meteorologist Colton Williams is live in the courtyard. And Colton, we're not getting any relief anytime soon, are we? Yeah, that's right. That's right, Parker and Cameron. Hey, we're live here on the South Oval today. Actually, really a beautiful fall afternoon here. Lots of sunshine going on. Temperatures are above average, but we did have the passage of a cold front roll through throughout the early hours of the afternoon. All right, so that cold front is now pushed off. So now we're left with a breezy north breeze. Again, not knocking our temperatures down too much. Topped out in the lower 80s today for most of us right now, hanging out upper 70s and lower 80s. But yeah, one of the bigger stories going on with the dry conditions going on right now is that allergy index looking at levels in the high approaching the extreme category on some days here really for the weed and the tree allergies now that ragweed allergy that's what's getting a lot of Oklahomans right now the question is when does allergy season really end that really comes with the first freeze of the year now on average here in Oklahoma we see our first freeze really around the end of October 
early November in Oklahoma City, the date is actually November 4th. So about three weeks away from when we average our first freeze, that will really end the ragweed allergy season, all right? Now coming up in the full weather forecast, gonna be talking about more cold fronts there lining up as well as some rain chances. We'll have your first look at your game day. Catherine Liberta has all that coming up. Thanks, Colton. The parents who participated in the U.S. Capitol riots with three of their children will spend a little time behind bars. A judge sentenced Don and Thomas Munn to 14 days in jail Wednesday after they pleaded guilty to illegally protesting in the Capitol building. Their adult children, Kaylee, Joshua, and Christy, avoided jail time. Instead, they were sentenced to probation and some home confinement, according to court documents. The, fam the Munn family climbed into the U.S. Capitol through a broken window on January 6, 2021, and entered several rooms, including a Senate conference room. So far, they are the largest family to be sentenced together for their actions during the attack. And the midterm election is right around the corner, and the Cleveland County Election Board is beginning to test their devices ahead of Election Day. The Election Board has ballots for everybody to vote and also has devices to help those that are visually impaired. The device reads the options on the ballot to the voter and they select which they select their votes with buttons on the remote. The votes are then cast as normal ones once the ballot is submitted. Everything that's on the ballot is all through this. If they want to repeat something, they turn the wheel, but anytime they want to vote, then they hit enter. And at the end, they will they can recap it by going through all that, make sure they voted for everybody they wanted. If you're 18, make sure you're registered to vote by October 14th at 5 p.m. if you plan to vote in the November election. President Biden sat down and talked about Vladimir Putin's nuclear threats. Zoe Watson has that and the rest of today's national and international headlines from the News Center. Thanks, Parker. President Joe Biden is responding to Russian President Vladimir Putin's threat to, of nuclear war with Ukraine. It's irresponsible for him to talk about it. The idea that a world leader of a, one of the largest nuclear powers in the world says he may use a tactical nuclear weapon in Ukraine, and the whole point I was making was it could lead to just a horrible outcome. President Biden went on to say he doesn't think Putin will use nuclear weapons on Ukraine. A guilty verdict has came down this afternoon against conspiracy theorist Alex Jones. A jury awarded $965 million in damages to the families of the victims in Sandy Hook school shooting. The defamation case centered around Jones' lies about the 2012 elementary school massacre, calling it a hoax. Jones was not in the courtroom today, but his attorney says he intends to appeal the decision. A former San Antonio police officer is facing charges after shooting an unarmed teen. San Antonio's police chief says 17-year-old Eric Cantu wasn't a threat when he was eating in his car last week. Former officer James Brennan reported he had thought the same car had evaded the police the night before. Prosecutors charged Brennan with two felony counts of aggravated assault by a public servant. Cantu's family says he remains on life support. And there has been much talk and support for Dwayne The Rock Johnson to run for president, but he says he isn't ready to swap the title of dad for commander in chief. Cameron Parker, I wouldn't want to be president either. Yeah, I, me either. Two countries with a tense history have now reached a historic moment. When we come back, we have the details on what this could mean for natural, ga natural gas exploration. And devastation has rocked U.S. coastlines this hurricane season. But see how OU organizations are helping out the victims of those natural disasters on the other side of the break. and Lebanon have reached a historic agreement over their shared maritime border. This agreement could pave the way for natural gas exploration and reduce tensions between the countries. So we would want to make sure this is a peaceful border and they would want to make sure equally that this is a peaceful border. Both the say they are ready to move forward with the official agreement. It's been exactly two weeks since the Hurricane Ian devastated parts of Florida and there are still hundreds of homes underwater and thousands without power. The Florida governor is optimistic that power will return to the mainland soon. Early estimates show that Ian could be the most costly hurricane to make landfall in Florida. And on the other side of the world, hundreds of pilot whales have died. 
New Zealand's Department of Conservation said that nearly 500 whales were stranded in our shark-infested waters. They were found on a remote island chain in the southern Pacific. This comes less than a month after 200 whales died on the coast of Tasmania. The department said that it is common for the pilot whales to become stranded, but the behavior is not understood. And Cameron and Parker, 41 endangered Indian narrow-headed soft-shell turtles have hatched for the first time in America. They were hatched in the San Diego Zoo, and let me tell you, they were pretty cute. Thanks, Bailey. Natural disasters have devastated areas of the country, but OU organizations are lending a hand. The Oklahoma Weather Lab, OU Scan, and Student Affairs for the School of Meteorology have partnered to help those affected by Hurricane Fiona and Ian. They raised over $3,000 last year and hope to raise even more. So we are currently just over $1,000. We hit 1,000 yesterday, um, and we've only been going for a few days now. We opened it officially on Friday. Um, so we're really aiming to surpass what we had last year. Now, if you want to give, go to Oklahoma Weather Lab's Twitter or in person at the National Weather Festival on October 29th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And in case you missed the South Oval's temporary makeover, we've got you covered. When we come back, we'll show you one of homecoming's best traditions. And man, I'm ready for some fall temperatures to finally come. Catherine, what can we expect? That's right, Cameron. Those fall temperatures are on their way. I'll have when those temperatures will arrive and their full forecast coming up right after this break. Welcome back to OU Nightly. We had some rainfall last night and while we did see that rain, it's not enough to get us out of the drought that we've been seeing over the last 30 days. Now, this is our rain total for those last 30 days, and we can see that we haven't even seen a quarter inch of rain here in Norman, and we are just under four inches of rain under where we should be for this time of year. And along with those uh, those less uh, amount of rain totals, we're going to be sitting. We've been sitting way above average for this time of year. We can see lots of high temperatures. And while we did have a cold front come through earlier this afternoon, that's not going to affect our temperatures too much. We can see our current temperatures right now in the Oklahoma City metro area are still way above average. And that's the case for the rest of the state as well we can see that this is that cold front that is pushing its way through the state right now and those temperatures down in the southeastern part of the state are in the upper 80s but out in the panhandle they're sitting in the lower 70s and that's because of that cold front that came through now our evening tonight it's going to cool down to about 64 degrees tonight but we're going to have clear skies and it's going to be a pretty uneventful night nice and calm and quiet but as we look at our highs tomorrow we're going to be a little cooler than we were today due to that cold front but we're still going to be way above average across the state now Looking at the rest of the week, because of this jet stream, that's going to be pulling in some of that cooler air, which is going to make us cool um, tomorrow. But then what we're going to see is this cold front. Excuse me. We're actually, uh, we have a little technical difficulty, but if you're looking forward to those trees changing their colors, well, you're not going to get those tree changes just yet because Right here in central Oklahoma, we're not going to see those tree changes until about mid to late November. But if you're in the northern part of this state, you might start to see those trees change. And if you're in the Colorado area or even in the northeastern part of the United States, you might be starting to see those trees trees change their colors. You might be starting to see some of those reds and maybe even a couple of purples or two. But as we look at our seven day forecast, hopefully when we have these cooler temperatures set in, maybe those leaves will start to change on our trees. But looking at our weekend, we're going to see those temperatures skyrocket back up into the upper 80s. And we do have a chance for some rain Saturday night going into Sunday because we're going to have a strong cold front that's going to push through and that's going to bring us into the upper 60s later next week. Thanks, Catherine. If you take a walk on campus this week, You'll see the sidewalk is very colorful. Student organizations all over campus chalk unique designs following this year's homecoming theme, Welcome to the Palace. Campus Activities Council randomly pairs organizations together, bringing togetherness as they celebrate the university and Sooner Magic. If you're wanting to participate in more homecoming festivities, these organizations will compete at the annual Raw Rally held at Lloyd Noble Center tonight at 730. 
Well, it's looking like the Sooners could be debuting some new uniforms this weekend against the Jayhawks. That's right. Sydney Bush has more on that. Sydney, how are they looking? They are looking good, Parker. And OU is honoring the past with a brand new look for the future. And Dylan Gabriel gives his update on his health. Stick around to see it next in sports. Switching it up from the classic Crimson and Cream, Sooner football has a brand new look, debuting this weekend against Kansas. The dark gray uniforms were designed by the athletes themselves, representing unity in honor of former running back Prentice Gott, OU's first black scholarship football player. Hi, I'm Sydney Bush and it's time for sports. Hoping to be back in business this weekend for their pivotal matchup versus number 20 Kansas. First string Sooner QB Dylan Gabriel shares his current injury update. Still in it, still in it. Just, you know, uh, continuing to, uh, you know, work with the trainers. Um, but I feel really good, thankfully. You know, I took the, the first two days really seriously. You know, just resting and, and um, trying to do everything I could to, you know, get back, so. The Athletics' Zach Boyer reported that the Kansas Jayhawks' usual starting QB, Jalen Daniels, would miss the rest of the season due to a shoulder injury. However, Daniels says that that is news to him, as you can see by this tweet. The Kansas quarterback isn't expected to suit up against Oklahoma this weekend, but it sounds like he won't miss the whole season. OU men's hoops is making some traction before their season tips off on November 7th. Guard Grant Sheffield was voted Big 12 preseason newcomer of the year, only the seventh in Sooner history. No surprise here, last season stud forward Tanner Groves received a preseason all Big 12 honorable mention. And OU Volleyball has a jam-packed next few days. The Sooners are heading down to Lubbock tonight to take on Texas Tech. Hoping to earn their first conference win on the road this season, on Saturday, the Sooners are home sweet home for Illumini Night to host Iowa State. Admission is free, so head to McCasland after the football game. Set to receive the esteemed Bear Bryant Lifetime Achievement Award, former OU football coach Bob Stoops says this honor is, quote, a distinction he does not take for granted. After 191 wins, 10 Big 12 Conference titles, and a place in the College Football Hall of Fame, Stoops' legacy is lasting on Sooner Nation. And the Major League Baseball playoffs are in full swing, with Tuesday's game making a case for the best playoff game ever. With one colossal swing, Jordan Alvarez of the Houston Astros won game one against the Seattle Mariners with a three-run walk-off home run. With the first game like that, I'm excited to see what game two will bring tomorrow night. Parker, Cameron, back to you. Thanks, Sydney. Well, winter is right around the corner, and that can only mean one thing. Bears fattening up for hibernation. And there's a contest in Alaska that pits these giant bears against each other. Find out which one won when we return. I'm Victoria Anderson at the OU Nightly Update Desk. NASA's planetary defense mission DART has succeeded in its first trial. The $325 million mission launched with the goal of changing the course of asteroids. The test was successful, causing a 32-minute change in an asteroid's orbital period. NASA is hoping DART will prove useful in preventing potential impacts. Cameron, Parker, back to you in the studio. Thanks, Victoria. Well, a winner has been crowned in this year's Fat Bear Contest in Alaska's Katmai National Park and Preserve. The 2022 champion is a bear known by the number 747, marking his second victory in three years. The contest is a week-long celebration of bears gorging themselves on salmon at the preserve in preparation for winter hibernation. Fans watch and vote, and based on initial results, there were more than 900,000 votes. 747 defeated bear number 901 in the finals. And before we go, let's get one last look at the weather. Jonathan, what's our game day looking like on Saturday? 
Parker, it's looking like it's going to be a great game day, at least weather-wise. I can't promise anything sports-wise, but if you're heading out to the game for that homecoming weekend, it's going to be a beautiful 67 degrees at tailgating time with some partly cloudy skies. And then as you head inside to Gaylord Stadium, the temperatures are just going to continue to get better throughout the game. We're going to see temperatures in the mid to upper 70s, and then they're going to be in the 80s by the fourth quarter. So that weekend is looking beautiful. Thanks, Catherine. Well, that's all we have for today. Thanks for watching OU Nightly. I'm Parker Abels. And I'm Cameron Joyner. Be sure to watch OU Nightly tomorrow live at 430. Good night.